Hello, I'm Nikki Schiller. Welcome to the programme. We start this hour with the latest developments in the Middle East. President Biden has promised Israel ironclad United States support amid fears that Iran could launch reprisals for an attack that killed senior Iranians. US media are reporting that an American general will visit Israel on Thursday to discuss Washington's fears. President Biden warned that Iran is threatening to launch a significant attack after Israel struck the Iranian consulate in Syria 10 days ago. Mr Biden was speaking hours after the Iranian supreme leader again said Israel would be punished for the strike on its consulate. Meanwhile, the Hamas political leader, Ishmael Haniyeh, says there'll be no change in the group's demands for a permanent ceasefire in Gaza, despite the killing of three of his sons in an Israeli airstrike. Israeli media is reporting that the Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, had not been briefed in advance of the attack. This video is believed to show Ismail Haniya receiving the news in Qatar, where he lives in exile. Israel has confirmed the strike, describing the sons as Hamas military operatives. He's been actively involved in negotiations to broker a ceasefire with Israel, demanding a permanent end to the fighting and the return of displaced Palestinians to their homes. We'll assess the implications of the killing of his sons in a moment. First, here's President Biden on the threat posed by Iran in the region. We also want to address the Iranian threat to launch a significant, they're threatening to launch a significant attack on Israel. As I told Prime Minister Netanyahu, our commitment to Israel's security against these threats from Iran and its proxies is ironclad. Let me say it again, ironclad. We're going to do all we can to protect Israel's security. Let's go live to our Middle East correspondent, Hugo Bachega, who is in Jerusalem. We heard President Biden there, Hugo. There are real fears now over what Iran might do and the possibility of the conflict spreading wider in the region. Yeah, and it's very interesting that over the last few days, American officials have been saying that they believe this possible Iranian uh, response uh, to that attack in Damascus is a matter of uh, when and not if. And uh, obviously, you know, we don't know what the Iranians are planning to do. They have this network of factions across the region, the so-called axis of resistance, which includes Hezbollah in Lebanon, the Houthis in Yemen, uh, factions in Iraq and Syria. And all those players have already been involved in this conflict. Hezbollah, for example, has been attacking Israel from Lebanon almost every day. But I think the fear here is that Iran may be planning to launch an attack by itself, uh, you know, from its own territory. And that could be involving um, missiles and drones. And uh, Israeli officials have been saying that uh, they are going to retaliate to any kind of attack coming from uh, Iran. Uh, Israeli authorities said they would give a significant response. And uh, I think, you know, in another sign of these concerns uh, today, uh, the Axios uh, website is reporting that the senior U.S. military commander in charge of the Middle East is going to come to Israel to have conversations with the Israeli defense minister and also with uh, military officials. And I think what President Biden was trying to say is that despite uh, the differences, uh, you know, between uh, the Americans and the Israelis over the, you know, the Israeli uh, conduct in uh, the war, in Gaza and we've seen in the last few days you know the level of frustration from America uh, with uh, Israel with the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu President Biden is saying that these two countries remain very strong allies and that any kind of Iranian attack on Israel will trigger uh, an American reaction if we move now to that attack that killed the three sons of Hamas's political leader what more do we know about the attack itself yeah, so Ismail Hanya is uh, saying that this was a political uh, assassination and that, uh, you know, his reaction was that, you know, Israel would be delusional to think that this would change, uh, you know, the position of Hamas in these uh, ceasefire negotiations. I think, you know, the key context here to this attack is that uh, this happened as, you know, uh, we're waiting to hear from Hamas whether they're going to accept, you know, the ceasefire proposal that was put forward after those mediator negotiations in Cairo. And uh, at the heart of this proposal is a six-week ceasefire uh, in the conflict in Gaza. Uh, 
uh, and uh, you know this would see Hamas uh, releasing you know 40 hostages who are being held in Gaza in return for 900 Palestinians who are now being held in Israeli jails but many obstacles remain because it seems that Hamas has told negotiators that it doesn't have you know 40 hostages who fit the criteria that has been you know set up in this uh, proposal you know female soldiers uh, elderly people people who are sick uh, and uh, it seems that there's some differences as well uh, related to the identity of the prisoners who are going to be released so we're still waiting to hear from Hamas but I think you know Hamas has been sticking with its uh, you know demand that any kind of ceasefire in Gaza should be permanent because you know a senior Hamas officials said that they believe that any kind of temporary ceasefire would mean that once the hostages are out the Israelis may return to Gaza to finish the job and try to destroy Hamas. So they want a permanent ceasefire, they want the end of, of the war, but we're still waiting to see uh, you know, how they're going to respond to this latest proposal. Hugo Pachega, our Middle East correspondent, live in Jerusalem. Thank you.